Hello fellow humans, welcome to the Milk of Hot Humla. It's been a while since I've made a video because I've had my hands full with a new baby boy. And I got a new room. Um, I'm not sure about the lighting and acoustics yet, so we'll work that out. But um, the day after my, my new son was born, there was an interesting paper that came out by researchers from Trinity College in Ireland concerning DNA extracted from one of the passage tombs. Uh, the Newgrange tomb, and they got some pretty interesting findings. It turns out the person that was buried in the tomb, his DNA points to incest, first degree incest, which means either with, um, it was a male, so either with his mother or with a sister. Also, the DNA is related to other passage tombs um, throughout Ireland, and so what this suggests is that there was a dynastic elite that were in charge of building these tombs. And also the DNA points to these were people that came with the migration of Neolithic farmers to Ireland. And so also it points to um, factual basis for mythology concerning the Tuatha de Danann. So that's what we'll be discussing today. Welcome to the Milk of Adhumla. The Newgrange tomb is located in County Meath, Ireland, along the River Boyne. It was built around 3200 BC, about 5,000 years ago. Now, there's other um, Neolithic passage tombs in Ireland, and there's a few in the same area. Um, I'm going to look at the names here so I don't forget, and I hope I pronounce these right. Um, Douth and Noth. Um, Douth and Newgrange both have winter solstice alignments, while the other one, um, Nouth, is oriented with the spring and autumn equinox. Now, at Newgrange, on the winter solstice, the rising sun shines along a long passageway, and it illuminates some spiral petroglyphs inside. Now, during the solstices, the sun, which normally moves along the horizon, seems to stand still for a few days, like it rises in the same place. And this is interesting because there's a myth, legend, maybe it's oral history in Ireland, concerning the Tuatha de Danann that talks about a king who made the sun stand still in this very same area. The Tuatha de Danann were a group of supernatural beings from Irish mythology. Each one was related to a different aspect of nature or the sciences or, or life in general. They were descended from Nemed, who was the leader of an earlier group of inhabitants of Ireland. Um, it is written that they came to Ireland in dark clouds and landed amongst the mountains. They fought three prominent battles that are written about, and in the last battle against a group called the, and I hope I get this right, the Milesians, who were supposedly from the Iberian Peninsula or northern Portugal. Well, the Tuatha de Danann were defeated, and Ireland was divided between the two groups. The Milesians got the ground, the above ground land, and the Tuatha de Danann went to live underground. Now, one of the stories connected with Newgrange talks about the Dagda, who was one of the kings of, of the Tuatha de Danann. The Dagda was associated with fertility, agriculture, strength, magic, wisdom. He could control life and death, the weather, crops, time, and the seasons. Now, the story goes that the Dogga, Dogda goes to Newgrange and seduces the wife of the owner at the, the mansion on the Boyne uh, named Elkmar. And he sends Elkmar away. 
and then he um, has sex with um, the wife of of uh, Elkmar, who is the goddess of the river Boyne. Now she becomes pregnant, so the Dogda, who can control time and the seasons, causes the sun to remain still for nine months, and then the the, the child is born on the same day that he's conceived. So at Newgrange, the son, Dogda, uh, one of the gods of the Tuatha de Danan, causes the son to stand still. Now there's another story that's related to the, the complex at Doth, which is another passage tomb, um, which talks about the birth of the Tuatha de Danan hero Chu Chulan. And again, I hope I'm saying these right. In this story, Bressel, the king of Ireland, seduces his sister, or maybe his half-sister, at the site. And again, the son is made to stand still. And then Chu Chilain is born from this incestual relationship. Now, in both of these stories, a powerful figure has illicit sexual relations. And makes the sun stand still on the winter solstice. And then a divine, a special child is born. Now, this can be related to the, the seasonal changes. Now, these tombs are both aligned with the winter solstice um, when the sun does appear to stand still on the horizon. So you have the, uh, a, a father figure or a, or a king that has illicit sexual relationships, and then and then a child, a special child, is born. So on the winter solstice, then, the days begin to grow longer. So it's like a new sun. A new sun is born. And then springtime eventually comes, and summer. And then you have autumn, and then the old, it, by then the sun is old. So then it begins to die, and then a new sun is then born after the winter solstice. So I I see, and I I think also scholars have written that these stories have are related to this changing of the seasons, changing of the year, of the sun passing, and then a new sun, a new year being born. So now with this new paper and this new DNA analysis, we see that this person that was buried inside the tomb was the result of first degree incest. So we have a mythological story that may be based on cultural memory. There, this, this actually happened. Um, it suggests that there was a, a special ruling class because these incestual relationships only happened in, in a few situations, like with the Egyptian pharaohs, um, the, the, the Inca kings, um, the British royalty. Um, so, you know, it usually it's frowned upon. And um, so it only happens in very special situations. So we have a, a elite class ruling over a large portion of Ireland. Um, we have um, present day um, archaeology and DNA analysis suggesting that there is some basis to these mythologies. And that's something that I've always kind of thought now creation myths and different kinds of mythologies use a lot of imagery and metaphor. But I've always thought that they do have basis um, um, in fact, uh, things that have actually happened. Uh, I live in Peru, and I've read a lot about a, a story uh, of the creation of Chile and the coastline of Chile, in which two gods, uh, a god of the land and a god of the water, fight. And then um, the god of the land ends up raising the land so that it doesn't become inundated by the god of the sea. And it's really interesting that, uh, geologically speaking, that's really what happened. And so a lot of these mythologies explain natural processes of nature and maybe things that actually happened in history. So we see that. Um, This DNA analysis also suggests that these were um, Neolithic farmers that had um, 
had migrated and they were um, unrelated to the previous hunter-gatherers of Ireland. And then the two groups um, began to mix. But this was a wave of immigrants that came in um, that were that were farmers and then ended up um, being these dynastic elite rulers of Ireland. So very interesting paper uh, just came out uh, the, the day after my son was born on the 16th. Um, there's been a couple of videos made. I'll put links in the descriptions below. Um, the paper was not open access, so I could only read the abstract and then what um, Science Direct and Eureka Science uh, had had written about it. So again, subscribe, please, like, please, share, please, and always, 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 thank you and stay gold.